Hello all, welcome to R&D Labs with me Rohan and today is a brand new series in which we are going to cover how to integrate your iOS application with SiriKit. So make sure that you are subscribed to the channel and hitting the notification button so that you are notified next time a video comes in. In today's tutorial, we'll be seeing how to have your Siri suggestions enabled for your application in iOS. So let's get started. So for this tutorial, I have created a startup project in Swift and my iOS version is 14.3 and my Xcode version is 12.3 as well. And the first thing that you need to do is while working with SiriKit is to enable your project with Siri. And that does need to do by going into signing and capabilities and enable the capabilities within it. So I will have to search Siri and just double tap it and just wait for some time uh, let the check happen and siri is enabled uh, as you can see on the project so after you enabled the siri capabilities within your application you need to know how does the siri shortcut actually work it is like training a repeated user activity and this particular activity is then shown on the user's ios device uh, under siri suggestions or sh siri shortcuts okay so this is how it is actually working so for this purpose uh, we will have to create uh, a variable of ns user activity within the project uh, so what will be the use case for us so in this case what we will do is we will create uh, for example a label that will show an elapsed time for a certain period okay for a certain time interval we'll be showing an elapsed time so that could be even on your date of birth or any event that has surpassed so that uh, elapsed time uh, actually we can show it to the user how will we show it so there should be some kind of a user activity for that so when the user clicks on a button we can show a refreshed elapsed time for the user okay so this will be our example and this is what we are going to do in this tutorial so let's go ahead in our main dot storyboard and over here we will add a label and a button okay and we will just title the button as get elapsed time and for the label i will just say uh, elapsed time and keep the placeholder as it is and what i will do is next i will bring out my assistant editor and i will create an outlet for my label and i will name it as uh, label underscore elapsed time okay and the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create an action for my elapsed time. So let's go ahead and name the action as um, calculate um, elapsed time and that's it. And what I'm going to do now is I am going to calculate the elapsed time in seconds. And so for this purpose, I will have to create a date formatter class. So let's create um, let date formatter is equal to date formatter and date formatter dot date format is equal to I'll keep it as y y y y mm dd and I'll keep it as hh mm ss and let's say let start date is equal to date formatter dot date okay and we will have to give the the date from so this is your date that you will be having a elapsed time calculated so i'll just keep it as 2021 uh, 0 01 0 zero zero and zero zero okay so this is my time and the date and over here what i'm going to do is i'm going to calculate the seconds from that so let's say let seconds sorry seconds is equal to start date 
and I will post and wrap it to time interval since now and let's say as double okay so this will give me uh, the seconds in double okay next uh, I'll just print the seconds into it so let's say uh, I will just write seconds and after that I'll just specify seconds since the unit is also there okay, so the user is not confused and I will write label dot elapse or label underscore elapse time dot text is equal to string we will have to typecast it from double right so let's write format sorry format and we will have to give percentage f to it within the double quotes and just write seconds to it so you are actually uh, typecasting it from double to string over here and that's it so what i have done over here in this line of code is i have a date for which i have to calculate the elapsed time and whenever the user will click on this you will have a refreshed elapsed time in seconds so this is what we are doing right now let's give it a try and see how it looks in our iphone simulator i have selected iphone 11 pro as my simulator all right so the app is up on my simulator and as you can see it shows us in minus uh, which is okay and this is what the seconds is from the new year until the date that we are recording this uh, tutorial so uh, so this will keep on changing uh, as and when the user is uh, clicking the get elapsed time uh, the seconds is refreshed and it is shown to the user so next up what we are going to do is we are going to create a function by the name uh, calculate elapsed time and we are going to call that function within the action of calculate elapsed time so let's write that so let's write function calculate elapsed time um, i don't want to name it similar to what the action is so i will say with an underscore okay and i will uh okay sorry yeah so i'll just copy all of this into my function and i'm going to call my function within the action okay so this is what uh, we are going to do next we are going to create another function called as create user activity so let's write function create user activity okay and the reason uh, why we are writing it as a separate function is because we have to call or rather uh, we will have to declare a variable of type ns user activity and we will have to train siri for repeated user actions so for this purpose we will have to write a function and uh, we will have to add in the details for that user activity so let's create a variable of activity so, so let's let activity is equal to ns user activity and over here we will have to specify the activity type okay and uh, the and the best practice over here is to use your reverse dns and use a bundle identifier for that so for now what we're going to do is we're going to write a bundle identifier which is com dot rnd labs me dot hello siri and we are going to give a name to our activity which is uh, say calculate elapsed time so you have your reverse dns already specified over here and you have to name your activity for this um, so this is what we have done after doing this we will have to add in different properties for your activity variable which is activity dot title okay so now this is the title that will be shown on siri suggestions so I'm going to write get elapsed time okay so this is the um, the title uh, shown on Siri shortcuts and suggestions then we will have to write activity dot is eligible 
for search which is true i need to give a space yes and activity dot is uh, eligible for prediction is equal to true okay so you will have to add in these two properties for the activity and specify true for them and then next what you're going to do is you'll have to set the activity variable uh, to your apps user activity so we will have to set self dot uh, user activity is equal to activity so this is the same variable that we have used and declared in the uh, previous lines and after that we are going to write another line of code which is self dot user activity dot become current okay so you have declared this and your user activity set is ready so this is the uh, the text that cd will show you in the shortcuts in your ios devices after doing this what you're going to do is you need to call the user activity method within the calculate elapsed time because this is what is going to be called repeatedly by the user okay and your cd will get trained with these lines of code so we will have to just call this and let us build and see whether we have any errors okay so the errors are not there next uh, let us head down to our scene delegate.swift uh, in case if you if you are using a older version of xcode or a older ios build you will have to write you will not get the scene delegate.swift but you will have the app delegate.swift so in that case you will have to write the the function that we are going to write in scene delegate inside your app delegate dot swift class okay so let's write function and here we will have to call a function called as continue user activity so let's write scene and let's find continue user activity which is first in line over here so let's call that and we will write if over here what you have to do is we'll have to unwrap our view controller that we have declared here okay so this is our view controller and we will have to call the calculate elapsed time function okay this is a function that we need to call inside your scene delegate so based on your user activity that is a function that will be called for siri suggestions or siri shortcuts so let's write if let uh, you'll have to create an object for a view controller and you'll have to write window dot root view controller as view controller so you have unwrapped your view controller oh yeah so we will have to optionally declare the view controller and then we'll have to call the view controller dot calculate elapsed time so this is the method that we have written and we just need to call it within our scene delegate dot swift class we just give a nice build and see whether we are running into any errors okay and i feel that it is all right now let's stop the build which we had run earlier and we just need to rerun it again let's open up our simulator so the project is ready uh, let's hit multiple times and let's train Siri for for this okay all right so I have uh, kind of engaged the the button multiple times and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close this app and I'm going to go back to my home screen which is over here oops the yellow color or the yellow tin that you're seeing it's some kind of a bug with my Xcode with iOS 14.3 selected and it's something to do with the GPU so let's give it a try by searching for elapsed time oops i think you are able to see it uh <laughs> apple here you go so uh, as you can see guys i'm not sure if you're able to see it clearly but it, it says uh, get elapsed time out here so uh, this is what is what we have titled our siri shortcut or siri suggestions to be so let's go ahead and click this and it should open up a new second so right now it is 688632 and 
let's go back over here and run this again and as you can see in the uh, in the console itself uh, the second has changed so as and when the uh, you click the shortcut over here the get elapsed time function is called so just do that again oops just yep there you go so the second is changed and refreshed that means the user activity function that we had written under view controller is getting called from cd shortcut so this is what is getting called repeatedly so this is how you enable the series suggestions for your ios applications in swift i hope you like this video if you have any doubts or comments please reach me out in the comment section as usual i'll be happy to help and please like and subscribe to our channel and see you until next time cheers